everybody. Today we're going to talk about the organs of speech and their functions. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to name all the speech organs and define their functions and pronunciation. Let's get started with a small video where you will be able to appreciate how our speech organs work. As you can see in this video, a lot of speech organs are involved in the speech production. Some of them are mobile, they move, they called active. Some of them are fixed, they do not move, they are called passive. I would like to concentrate on each speech organ then. Let's get started with the cavities. There are four cavities in our speech tract. They are the oral cavity or the mouth cavity, the nasal cavity, the pharynx, and the larynx. They are empty spaces and their function as resonators. Everybody knows where our oral or mouth cavity is. There we produce our oral sounds, such as, for example, b, p, t, k, and so on. As for our nasal cavity, it is extremely important for nasal sounds. In English, they are m. N, mm. Let's participate in this experiment. When you start pronouncing a nasal sound, for example, m, please pinch your nose. Mm, mm. So you can notice that the stream of air tries to go out, but it cannot, so no sound is produced. The other two cavities are the pharynx, ear, and the larynx. The larynx is a stick that comes out in the front of our neck. It's more obvious in men than in women. The larynx is the place where our vocal cords are. Now, let's pass over to the articulators. As it is given on the slide, the articulators are the parts of the mouth that are responsible for tuning sound into speech. They are subdivided into active and passive, as we have already discussed. The passive articulators are simple bones. They do not move. The active articulators are muscles. So they move. So I would like to speak about each articulator in detail and define its function. Here I have prepared for you a table with the active and passive speech organs. From the table you can see that there are more active speech organs than the passive ones. The active speech organs are the lips, the tongue, the soft palate, the uvula, the lower jaw, the vocal cords, the lungs, and the soul. The passive speech organs are the teeth, the alveolar ridge, the heart palate. I would like to start with the passive speech organ. We know that the teeth are divided into the upper teeth and the lower teeth. They are fixed, they are bones, and they serve as a place of articulation. Another passive organ is the alveolar ridge. 
or the alveoli. It is a bump located behind the upper teeth, right here. It also serves as a place of obstruction. The heart palate is also passive. It is a continuation of the alveolar ridge. Then comes the soft palate with the uvula. The soft palate with the uvula takes an active part in the production of oral and nasal sounds. When the uvula is raised, it blocks the passage to the nasal cavity. So, the stream of air from the lungs goes out through the mouth cavity and oral sounds are produced. If the uvula is lowered, the stream of air goes out freely through the nasal cavity and nasal sounds are produced. In English, they are m, n, m, as I have already mentioned. The tongue is the most important articulate in English. For the purposes of phonetics, the tongue is divided into five parts. They are the tip of the tongue, the blade of the tongue, the front of the tongue, the back of the tongue, and the root. There is one important rule in English. The tip of the tongue must be flexible and mobile. So you need to train your tip of the tongue to be such. For example, you can use this exercise. You need to curl up your tip of the tongue and touch the upper lip, the upper teeth, and then the alveolar ridge. Like that. You need to do it several times and very fast. The lips are also active in English. They change the shape and the size of the mouth opening and influence the mouth resonator. They can be rounded and unrounded. When unrounded, they are either neutral or spread. Here, in the pictures, you can see on your left a rounded position, in the middle a neutral position, and on your right a spread position of English vowels. The lower jaw. This is the only articulator we would like to be less active in English. It must be free and flat. The vocal cords are also called the folds. There are two muscles by the sides of the larynx. The space between the vocal cords is called the glottis. There are two positions of the vocal cords, glossed and open. When they are brought together, they are tense. The stream of air that tries to go out touches them and they begin to vibrate. So voice is produced. When they are brought apart, they are lax. The stream of air goes out freely and no voice is produced. In order to understand it better, you need to compare voiced and voiceless consonants. Let's take, for example, the voiced consonants in English. B, D, G. And feel the vibration here while pronouncing them. B, D, G. And please compare them with the voiceless consonants in English.
such as for example and please feel no vibration here here in the video you will see the functions of the vocal cords in detail Thank you. The lungs. The lungs play a vital role now in our life and in sound production as well. They bring oxygen to our body. They help us to burn the fuel that we get with the neutrals in the food we eat. They are subdivided into the right lung and the left lung. The diaphragm. The diaphragm is the most powerful muscle in our body. It is located at the base of our lungs and it protects the lungs and enables breathing. For our recap activity, I have prepared a table with the four functions that our speech organs fulfill. These four functions are respiration, phonation, articulation, and resonation. And I have also distributed all the speech organs among these four columns. Please remember them all. Thank you.